this video we will be discussing how to calculate a decision limit and detection capability. In the previous video where we discussed the definition of CC alpha and CC beta, we got some idea how to calculate them, but let's look at it more closely. So here we have a, a calibration function uh, in the intensity and concentration scale. And let's say that we all, all already know uh, the distribution uh, of intensity values at the blank sample. So now we can uh, calculate this decision limit using the standard deviation and the mean of uh, the blank samples. And using now the calibration function, we can find the decision limit in the concentration scale. Now we can imagine that at each concentration there is this kind of a distribution of uh, uh, intensity results or uh, uh, at each concentration there is a distribution of, of the results. So um, here we can see this uh, standard deviation at each concentration represented by the blue lines. Now we can find the concentration at which a certain amount of uh, results fall below the decision limit. So this uh, will be then, uh, of course, CC beta. And at this concentration, we can now uh, take into account the false, uh, uh, false negative results. Now let's look at the equations that we can use. Here we have the equation that says that uh, we at first find CC alpha in the intensity value, in, in the intensity scale, using uh, the mean value that we get from the uh, blank samples. And we sum it uh, with uh, standard deviation that is multiplied by a student coefficient. This student coefficient comes from uh, t, distri t, t distribution that can be uh, that is that depends on the number of measurements that has been made and uh, on the alpha value that we have uh, defined for ourselves. After we find it uh, in the intensity scale, we can use the intercept and slope of the calibration function to estimate the concentration value for this. Now we can find the CC beta value uh, at first uh, summing the um, CC alpha value in the intensity scale to uh, the standard deviation times the student coefficient at CC beta concentration. So here uh, there is a little bit of a problem because we can see from this that uh, this uh, graph that the, um, the standard deviations at each concentration might not always be the same. This is actually quite common in analytical chemistry that uh, the, as the concentration grows, then the standard deviation also grows. So the, this is called heteroscedasticity. Now, the problem is that we need to know the CC beta before we calculate its standard deviation. Uh, to solve this problem, we can assume that actually we have homoscedastic data, which means that uh, the as the concentration changes, the standard deviation does not change. Uh, now, let's look at the uh, limit of detection uh, calculations that we saw in an earlier video. So here we can see that actually these uh, uh, equations are very similar and uh, in the second equation the real difference only is that the mean value of the uh, intensity and intercept is taken to be equal. The t value is uh, already defined as 3.3 and the standard deviation is taken from the calibration line. Of course, here these um, 
approaches assume that the data is homoscedastic. Here we actually make some more complicated uh, assumptions, which we will not go to in detail in this video. <coughs> However, com more complex approaches have been uh, developed and are in use. And for example, uh, uh, if they must be used, then, then uh, we suggest using ISO approach. So hopefully this video has uh, made a little bit more, more clear what these equations mean and how we calculate uh, decision limit, detection capability and LOD.